Imperial Planning Commission Order 637. Have a roll call, please. Commissioner Rivera, not present. Commissioner Harvey, not present. Commissioner Abadi, here. Vice Chairperson Mendoza, here. Chairman Hammerness, here. At this time, can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. All right, public appearances. B1, matters not appearing on the agenda. If I, if I can, Chairman, um, under adjustments to the agenda, we will be pulling item C1, for the record. Um, the minutes. The minutes. Very yes. good. Thank you. Uh, B1, matters not appearing on the agenda. If you wish to address the Planning Commission concerning any item not appearing on the agenda and within the Commission's jurisdiction, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the Chairperson, and at that time state your name and address for the record. The chairperson reserves the right to place a time limit on each person's presentation of three minutes. It is requested that longer presentations be submitted to the commission in writing. Is there anybody here this evening that has anything they wish to bring to us that is not currently on the agenda? I don't see any hands. Okay. B2, matters appearing on the agenda. If you wish to address the planning commission, commission concerning any items appearing on the agenda within the commission's jurisdiction, Please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the chairperson. And at that time, state your name and address for the record. The chairperson reserves the right to place a time limit on each person's presentation of three minutes. It is requested that longer presentations be submitted to the commission in writing. Now then, who do we have here on the for the agenda items? Show your hands. Show your hands. Who's here for the anybody? So we have two items. One concerning the um, barbecue stand, and another one concerning uh, Victoria Ranch. Is there anybody here in, we know you're for it, anybody here in opposition to the barbecue stand? Anybody who here is for the Victoria Ranch? Anybody here in opposition to Victoria Ranch? So all, all for is no against. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, the consent calendar has been pulled, so we're going to move on to D1. Uh, I'm going to open the, well, I'm going to read this, then I'll open it. Uh, subject, continue public hearing, discussion, action, conditional use permit, CUP 22-03, to allow the on-set sale and consumption of alcoholic beverages and on-site live entertainment in an existing restaurant within the neighborhood commercial zone located at 297 South Imperial Avenue, APN number 064-103-005. I'm going to open the public hearing at this time. This is a continuation from last week, which we were able, unable to fulfill this due to a failure of a quorum. So at this time, I'm going to ask the staff if there's any additional staff report information that we need on this. If there's nothing else, that's okay. Right. Um, the letter was included in the staff report, and there was an email delivered today. Okay, in opposition? Yes. Okay, I would like, at this time, I'd like any opposition material read into the record. I'll read the letter. Thank you. The letter states, and this is Diane Johnson, 035 South Imperial Avenue. Dear Mr. Morita, Morita it has been been brought to my attention that the Salt Cedar Barbecue has applied for a conditional use permit for their location at 297 South Imperial Avenue. The applicant is requ requesting this permit to allow for the on-site sale and consumption of alcoholic beverages and on-site live entertainment. The Salt Cedar Barbecue is located directly across the street from our townhouses at 303 and 305 South Imperial Avenue, 
while it is understood that the serving of alcoholic beverages increases revenue to not only the proprietor, but to the city as well. We thus have no op objections to its serving of them with two conditions. One, only wine and or beer to be served, and two, these two classes of alcoholic beverages may only be purchased with a food order. As presented, we are not in favor of the on-site live entertainment. Live on-site entertainment will be a detriment to the neighborhood and its quality of life. This type of entertainment will directly and negatively impact my tenants' peace and quiet enjoyment to which they are entitled in a residentially zoned property. Their home's tranquility will very likely be lost to loud voices trying to talk over louder music. Thus, as such, we are against any type of on-site live entertainment. Thank you for your considerate time and consideration, Diane Johnson. And that's the letter we got last week? Correct. And you said there was an email today? Yes. In addition to that, the uh, Diane Johnson is requesting the city to provide sound uh, noise attenuation to mitigate the, and protect the tenants from the intruding noise generated from the on-site entertainment. Um, this, um, several suggestions we come to her mind are sound attenuation fencing set at a proper height and parkway trees planted on both sides of West 6th Street. Mr. Chairman, just to provide some context to the email, um, the, the rest of the email, which isn't really relevant to those conditions that Mr. Moore just referred to, she she was not present for the last meeting and was, was not aware that the um, matter was continued to this meeting. She, she read something which led her to believe that this body approved um, the uh, uh, conditional use permit as applied for without any conditions. And so the, the, those mitigation measures that Mr. Moore just referred to was her comment and kind of, well, okay, uh, as a way to kind of mitigate the mistake you just made by granting the live music, please consider these uh, mitigation measures. So I think she would, the, the content of her July 13th letter was still applied. She would be opposed to the live entertainment and, in, and then believing that it was approved, that, that those are the measures she would recommend. Okay. And I wrote down soundproof fencing and then trees, basically is what you said, or some kind of shrub. Correct. Trees. And when we had a similar request for this property to be used in a similar fashion a year ago, she made no comment at all. But if you recall last time, the application was just for an acoustic guitar. This time they're just. Right, but they were yeah. also going to be a, a, a beer or distillery. We, we, we have the applicant here as well. Um, he, he can answer those specific Oh, yeah, questions. yeah, I know. I'm just, just discussing last year's. Um, so at this time, um, sir, if you want to step up and say anything further or... or uh, we do have a commissioner here that wasn't here last week, so... Yes. <laughs> so you're going to kind of have to start over. Class of 2000. Um, as far as my neighbor's concerns, um, like I was telling Yvonne, they're totally warranted. I get it. You know, she doesn't know me. She doesn't know what type of business I'm bringing in here. There has been a couple events that weren't set up the way that I would, that were close to the property and not necessarily controlled by me. And so that could have been a concern for her that maybe this is what it's going to be. And, and, you know, this is what they're bringing to the neighborhood with my changes that I'm trying to make, like the, uh, the new proposed stage area. Well, this is actually on Sixth Street, across from from the apartments. That's going to have privacy fencing um, there, so that should help. And that gate there, that is is uh, somewhat ajar, is also just going to be used for emergency purposes only. So it won't be an entrance normally. This is just their parking. So this is actually, 6th Street is behind this photo, 
and the proposed stage, proposed small stage, should be will be in this area. I'm also not proposing that I have live music every night till ten on the dot. Uh, uh, you know, electric punk rock metal stuff playing. I want there to be bulk bands, local artists playing when we're serving barbecue on the weekends. I don't want any problems with my neighbors, with the police, or anything. You know, I'd be happy to work with the neighbor directly. It would not be a problem for me. This is just, you know, part of the vision that I see for my barbecue restaurant that I'm trying to open here in Imperial. Sure. The breadth of the type of entertainment you're going to provide. I wouldn't want to hear uh, heavy metal if I live just across the street. It's, it's understandable. Okay. No, and, and we want it to be a place for people to showcase their talent, but we also understand that it's a restaurant. People are going to be sitting there with their families eating. You know, there, there would be no purpose to have a show like that. You know, to have a band of that, you know, noise level or, or annoyance uh, play. You know, it's not in my interest either as a business owner what I'm trying to do. of your um i'm not sure but you can do right a minimum um i guess yeah found from i guess traveling I, yeah I, I guess there on that here let me pull that slide back up yeah i guess here on the um east wall before the gate um, which would be pretty close to the stage area. I could I could put something at least to, to keep the noise going uh, north. Uh, but again, you know, I, I don't want the noise level to be high either. You know, I'm I'm okay with acoustic sets. The only thing is sometimes you need a microphone to get some feedback, and I'm mean, not feedback, uh, uh, some effects or whatever the singer might want for that that type of music, and it just rounds everything out. Um, but as far as like what would actually work, I couldn't tell you. I'm not an audio engineer. You know, I, I, I wouldn't know exactly what would be the easiest way to, to work it out in, in this situation, in this scenario, but. Important that. Of course. It doesn't mean that it can't have this opportunity for you. But, Absolutely. Um, my experience is uh, I have a place in downtown Little Italy, and when they put in uh, some it's totally changed since I bought it 20 years ago. I bet. Okay. And um, it was still Little Italy then. <laughs> <laughs> um, they put in, and, and the big thing is about, uh, it's not only the noise from the venue, but also with people leaving mm -hmm. that speak loud. And um, sometimes their voices carry. And if people happen to have their windows open, which they might in the wintertime fall, versus um, in the summer, um, then you will get response and it may be negative. So you just need to be aware, I, you probably will have employees to watch who's walking around when they leave your facility that they're, of that they're not, because you don't want the liability if they get into an accident because they have right. consumed too much. Right, yeah, yeah and yeah, and, and from what I've read already from the ABC application I've filled out, you know, they're obviously very strict on what they tell you you can, you can do and when you can, you know, so I, I, I understand the situation. I know how important it is, you know, I, I don't, right, I mean, right like I said, I'm from here. I'm not trying to, you know, they're my neighbors too. I live a few blocks away. Okay. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, well, you I'm not trying to get over on anyone. You want succeed and people who speak positively, even if they never don't frequent, they're across the street, right. they will advertise for you. Absolutely. And like I said, possibly because of previous events they might be expecting something but i can guarantee you that i'll do everything i can to mitigate this the, the noise level and any type of lowering issues or anything like that that they would be concerned with talked a lot about the apartments that are south of it but my one of my concern is the apartment that's west of it the okay. apartment complex that's west of it and I mean, the way that you're proposing the stage to be set up, it's going to be facing north, so the sound will be traveling north while the, uh, the Miss Johnson's apartment complex is south of it. But you're going to be leaving open the apartment complex that's west of it. Is there anything to try and mitigate that sound from traveling over there? Or? There's actually a, a building with other businesses inside my lot. Um, 
that runs the whole length of that that apartment complex. There is one further, uh, maybe 200 yards, but at that point they're pretty close to the to my next neighbor, which is the the, the veterans hall there. Um, it's you know I guess I could get you photos if you needed them, but you know they're not that close, and we we haven't had complaints from them, so I don't know if it's an issue. And like I said, anything we've already done, what we're going to do is going to be less because, you know, a couple of, of those events, the bands were playing too loud, no one was watching. You know, I was inside cooking, and not, it wasn't my event completely. I wasn't in control, so, you know. Or we had talked last week about the different noise levels, that how this is village center, so it's got a higher decibel level than the residential across the street or next door to it have. Is there a way that we can include in the CUP where the noise level at the point it reaches those apartment complexes must be what is acceptable for an apartment complex or for a family or residential area? Element, yes. Okay. I would probably be able to test that. I have a friend that, that has got quite a bit of audio equipment. We can probably figure out where we need to be and if there's going to be any problems. You know, That's my concern. Is it we have a noise element that says here in a residential area, this is how loud as it should be. But just because you're located in the village right. center, they need to be able, they should be able to expect that their noise level is not going to be higher than the, yeah, and than I they're on, allowed to. Every and I, yes. And I am on the cup. So I understand that I'm like, I'm right, right on the there. cutoff <laughs> and I'm doing what I can um, besides, you know, anything that I, you know, I haven't, I haven't thought about as far as, you know, sound blocks or anything, but I, you know, like I said, I don't know anything about that, you know, but. Wanting to say it was like 65 for residents, 70 for or 60 something. for single family and 65 Five for multi family. Correct. Oh, if at the point the noise reaches that multi family, if it's at 65, then that's what they, they that can That's what they're expecting. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it's acceptable for them anyway. Correct. And what are your thoughts on Ms. Johnson's recommendations of uh, the sound? barriers on the vents and the trees uh, and the for one it seems like overkill um for two i think it would be more of a of a visual nuisance or an eyesore uh those fences you're talking a six to eight foot fence blocking the whole front of their complex and the whole front of the side of uh of, of my building which also other businesses have their businesses have basically blocking their businesses um it just seems unnecessary you know, I'm trying to stay within limits and not bother anyone. I don't see the reason to go any further. And is it in the CUP? You would provided a drawing of where the proposed stage was going to be in the way that it's facing. Is it in the CUP that that's where it will be kept? And uh, I, I have uh, my speech that I gave last time. I have it in. PDF form and it does say it in there. I could, we could put it into the record if that's. I'm, I'm more worried about or, it being in the CUP where we can say the um, stage will be located here and it will face this direction. Gotcha. So that because this the CUP, if I'm not mistaken, it's binding to the property. It'll, it'll it can continue on if you sell. It continues on to the next person, and while you may have, you know, the good intent of putting a stage here and protecting the neighbors, if we approve it without putting that condition in, your next person that it's assigned to. They can just decide to put the stage facing right towards Miss Johnson's apartment complex if it's not part of that CUP. Just a, a few suggestions. If you look at item number three, that addresses the noise element. If you wanted to make an adjustment to that, to the 65. And then possibly at the end of three, you could address the stage to, and you can reference the slide. But I do recommend if you want it to be binding, it should be written and you should be clear about what sentences to add. There's two sections. I think three is the time and the, the sound. And so I, I do believe that would be good, but you could certainly review it and put it anywhere or add a new provision. Just looking very quickly at the conditions, I see I, item nine references the stage, doesn't but doesn't have its or doesn't refer to its orientation.
facing. Um, as far as a sound issue, since you're going to be on the north side of the building and you've got an entirely thick building to absorb a lot of it, and as long as your speakers weren't way up towards the top of the building, it should keep the bulk of the sound going north. But yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see where unless your band goes nuts, I don't see where it could be. I don't see where that's a huge issue. Myself, having dealt with stuff like that long ago, uh, and I'm not a big fan of people dictating a business on how many drinks they can sell to somebody uh, when they're trying to run a business. So that's just my feeling. I'd like to. I agree with that. I. They, I know that this application is for beer and wine, so um, the first item of Ms. Johnson's letter is being addressed. The concern I have with going into, oh, you can't sell alcohol unless they're eating, you are providing entertainment until late at night. And as we've discussed last week, you, you produce a certain amount of food product when it's done, you're done. And by not allowing the entertainment to continue and the alcohol to continue, it's basically shutting your business down when the food's gone. So I think we're covered in here that you can't serve alcohol to intoxicated persons. So, uh, but. ABC as well. Yeah. And I, I just, I disagree with saying you can't have alcohol unless you're eating. Because, I mean, there's times where some people may want, want to go there to eat. They just want to go for the entertainment. And you're, you're prohibiting them from doing that. <laughs> states where bars couldn't stay open unless they were serving food. So that's kind of they came up with potato chips and popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> that's another control thing. So I think the owner wants to make sure he doesn't have any way. And you'll make sure because you don't want a loss. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm trying to build something here, something real. You know. Don't want to put more shackles on. Well, and if we don't, don't uh, this is sad. Yeah. So if the only thing we add right now would be to dictate that the stage equipment has to be on the north side of the building facing north. And if we have a noise issue complaint down the road uh, that's substantial enough to be brought back to us at that time, we could say, you want to stay in business, we've got to modify the CUP, correct? Not, no. Or or what would be, no, I'm asking. We're approving what, the CUP now. Um, what, the, yeah, it becomes um, a nuisance at that point. Then. Unless it's a nuisance, but if, for instance, the CUP says you can be at a sound level of 100 and they're within that sound level, you can't just bring him back in. If he went to 105, you could. So you want to put the standards in here now rather than um, doing it later. Cause you, you already have a noise ordinance. You do. On the you books. do. Correct. So putting it in here just says repeating what's already on the books. Well, if you mine was a little bit different in that. The, this business is located within a village center, and it has its designated noise level. Then right next door and right across the street is a residential area that has a different sound level. My comment was, any noise that this business uh, produces, once it reaches that apartment complex, the decibels must be what is part of that residential area. It can't be higher than what the residential decibel level is. Because, I mean, we do have a noise, noise ordinance that says you're in this residential area. This is the sound level. As long as we're keeping what they're hearing in their area at that sound level, then we're following, to me, we're following the, the noise ordinance. But the, 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 the weird thing that we have going on is this, these two different noise levels right next door to each other. And I'm just saying, at the noise he's producing, by the time it gets to this apartment complex, it needs to be at what is allowed in that car, apartment complex. Per the ordinance, or the, that, the noise element. May I add to that? Wouldn't, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be the same thing as if I was in the other area already? As if my business was in the next area? Isn't well, that kind of the same thing. Well, or? no, because the reason being is 
by your in village commercial, you can have your decibels up to uh, seventy. Oh, okay. Yeah, you so can so have them up to seventy. Coming from here, it doesn't matter because it's yeah, a border. Yeah, you're okay. you're at seventy, I and right next door, yeah. they're at sixty-five. By the time yeah. your noise gets to their building, it needs to be at sixty-five okay. because that's what's allowed there. Just because you're allowed to have seventy, it can't. I don't want it being seventy once it gets right. to them. It needs to be at the level that's allowed in that residential area. So if they were restricted to sixty-five. They they can produce it at seventy, but by the time that sound travels to that apartment complex, it needs to right. have reduced to. But 65. I'm just saying that if we put it in the CUP at sixty-five, um, there's no way he can because well, we're talking five decibels. It's not a huge amount. But I think that's also restricting the purpose of the noise element. I mean, we it, as long as it, on the on his property, I don't care that it's at seventy. But once that noise travels to. The, the residential, I think it needs to be at the residential level once it gets there at 65. Right. But every anything can affect noise. Too much humidity will change the noise. The direction of the wind will change the way noise travels. The wet, I mean, there's a lot of variables that can make something loud in one spot one day and not loud the next spot another day. Some days a train going by my house sounds like it's literally right, a, <laughs> right in front of my house. Other days, it sounds like it's a quarter mile away, neither which is correct, but that's the way sound behaves. It's based on a lot of, there's a lot of factors. I mean, we're, we're starting to split hair here is beyond uh, reason. And I think most of our uh, areas that are zoned like this are surrounded by apartment complexes. Isn't that how the buffer system works to some degree? So there's always going to be somebody that's not going to be completely happy. So that's my only suggestion was if we restricted him to the 65, then there's no way it would be that it would be 60, we'll say, when they got there. But I'm just suggesting it. I'm not going to. Aaron, a couple of comments. This whole area, the area to the south of, of this property, is also village commercial. So the zoning is the same. I get the fact, I get the your comment with respect to the fact that the uses are different, but for zoning purposes, it's the same. Um, and I, told I, and it was I think the property to the west might not be in the village commercial. But the, certainly the property to the south is village commercial. And it, so, for all of this, I'm actually I'm not worried about the property to the south. I'm worried about the ones to the west. Because okay. the south, you do have that building, and you have the distance, and you have the sound traveling, you know, facing the other direction. I'm more worried about the property to the left, than, I mean, to the west, than I am to the property to the south. So, um, <clears throat> also, I heard reference made to a noise ordinance. It's my understanding we don't have a specific noise ordinance. What we do have the noise is a noise element. element to our general plan. And and I and I gather that that contains some standards. I miss I mean, No, I, I would. I said ordinance too. I would certainly take Mr. Moore's recommendation or city attorney's recommendation. My thought, as I sit here, is that it would be better uh, because now, if you look at condition three, it has a it has a reference to the noise element. Uh, but if you're looking at this, you, you don't know what that means. So, does it mean 65 at to, uh, at a residential, 70 at a, at this use? And so, I, uh, if if indeed you're interested in limiting deci or, or uh, looking at decibel levels, I would specify so that everybody knows uh, there's a. I, and I get what Chairman Hammerness is saying about how sound behaves and the variables associated with what you hear. Uh, but I, I think um, my sense would be that we would be we'd be better if, if the noise element to the general plan does not have specific very specific standards. Uh, all the more reason I would think that we would want to have something in these conditions so that the applicant knows, the neighbors know, the city knows, our our enforcement people know this is what this is what the rules are. Right, but I mean right here in. Condition three, which is brought up, if complaints arise, the city of Imperial may impose noise pollution mitigation measures on the business. So right there, we're giving ourselves a, in, in a, in a, the opportunity, if there are complaints, to step in and say, we got to fix this, I, yeah, right? I think potentially, but I think that gets us back to Ms. Turner's comment about the fact that if, if, it's, if, if it's depending on the magnitude of it, we could, we could get in a disagreement, if you will, 
about whether or not um, this condition is being violated. If we have some standard to look at, I think we're better off as opposed to, so uh, if complaints arise, okay, so if we get, is it one complaint, 10 complaints? So if complaints arise, say we get, we do get complaints, the city comes in and now says, okay, you can't have amplified music. The, the applicant or, or the, whoever's holding the permit at that point might say that, that you're going beyond what, what the circumstance, and we get into an argument about something that I think we can avoid if, if we just establish a standard. And, and I, I, I would be comfortable with just referring to the noise element if 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 we're if we're told that the noise element has those bright lines that you were talking about in terms of residential, commercial, and so forth. So is it more clear if we just say, okay, you're not going to go above sixty-five decibels? Well, because that is the most I, I think. I, I guess first, we, I I think we want to be clear about what the noise element says and what it doesn't say. Um, so, for, to be specific, um, under the uh, noise element, 60 decibels is established as acceptable outdoor noise exposure level for rural and single-family residential areas, and 65 for multifamily apartment complexes. Is there, is there something different for industrial and commercial? The village centers. Hospitals, nurseries. So, I, I, here's a scenario, Mr. Hammerness, and I think the the reason. It, 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 let's say we we leave leave it like it is, and then the city says, "Okay, it's 65, 70, whatever it is," and then we get complaints, uh, and then we're going to say, "Okay, well, yeah, our, we refer to the noise element. The noise element says 65." Uh, and you're at 60, but we're getting complaints. Are we then going to come in and say to him, okay, our, your condition said noise element. You're at, you're at, you're at 50, but we're getting com complaints, even though the standard is different, is higher than that. And I, I think that gets us into a... But of that, even if we had an established standard, or even if we said it was 60 and people complained, we'd be right back in the same boat. With that, even though it says 60, they're still complaining. No big deal. People complain about things every day. Oh, I know. You know, that's <laughs> gosh, Scaronia. Man, that's an Italian. It's a whiner. There's plenty of people who whine. Doesn't mean that they, we're going to jump. If, if, if the owner knows what his parameters are and it's black and white, he's agreed to it and we've agreed to it, I think that's only being fair. It's up front, as Mr. Marita has pointed out to us. You know, it's, it's a guideline, you know, the bumpers on the road, you know. So, you think you could work with 65? Okay, work with 65. You should put the words in there. Not hardly. <laughs> uh, and, um, and that would be in line three. Work that in there, and then the other one was. What did we say with respect to location? Yeah, it's a nine, I believe. Let's see. Nine would be stage location. And it is much easier for an applicant to come back with these specific standards and say, could we adjust them, than it is to do it the other way. So. Okay, so don't necessarily leave, but because sometimes you end up getting asked more questions. But this time I'm going to close the public hearing portion of this, I think. Absolutely. Uh, it's 7 11. All right, now our discussion, which I think we pretty much already handled. So, uh, is there anything else, or do we want to put this together into a uh, proposal or uh, amendment? Proposal to change the CUP so we can pass it. 
I'm the, the thought word escapes me. <laughs> oh, what you, what you could motion? Do. That's the one yeah. I'm looking for. Yes. And and if you match the agenda um, as it's listed on on your agenda approval of the resolution, read that as your motion, but say with two changes, one to three, one to nine, and explain what they are briefly. I think that would be perfect. Okay. Plus, you want to try, or do you want me to try it? <laughs> approval of resolution. I'll make a motion to approve resolution PC twenty dash or twenty twenty two dash four for the approval of conditional use permit twenty two zero three um, with the two changes. First one for item number three, where we will add a limitation of sixty five decibels on the sound, and on number nine, we'll, we will put the caveat that the stage must be located on the north side of the building, facing northward. That's perfect. <laughs> Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Call for the vote. Motion passes, 3 0. Motion passes. You're in business, sir. All right, everybody. We're going to take. And when are you reopening? Good, cool go. time. Yeah. Alexis, can, can we do our uh, friends right, meeting our, there on yeah. a Thursday? What was <laughs> the Thursday? Question, sir? First market day? Uh, as of right now, October 29th. <laughs> okay, everybody. We're going to take a five-minute break because I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was all good. Luis, do you have a recess slide? <laughs> a recess? No? We look forward to trying that barbecue. <laughs> Sir, sure, my hands are all still live. Where are my survivors? All the chains are off. <laughs> Do I want to wait for her? Oh, okay. okay, we can do that. <laughs> that is not a problem. I prefer heat. Second item is D2, uh, subject public hearing discussion action specific plan amendment plan unit 
development zone change and revision to the Victoria Ranch tentative track map for unit 4B. I'll open public hearing at this time, and we have a staff report on this. Good evening, Commissioners. The city received a request for an amendment to the Victoria Ranch specific plan, a plant unit development zone change and subdivision revision to the Victoria Ranch Unit 4B tentative track map. This project was previously approved back in December 2003, and the project included single family um, units, uh, multi family units, commercial area, open space, as well as a um, school site. Um, the proposed amendment to the Victoria Ranch. Uh, it only consists in a zoning designation for just Unit 4B. The overall footprint of the um, tenant map will remain the same as uh, you can see in, in one of your exhibits uh, as part of your package. The proposed changes to the re in revisions are related to the sign facing and internal circulation of the proposed Unit 4B. The overall housing of uh, units approved on the original tenant map was 1,279, and with this change, it will take it up to 1,311, uh, only resulting in 32 additional units. This proposed modification, it is only a 2.4% increase in density. The 4B, as provided in your package, um, have passed a 102 units proposed. The CEQA document um, was reviewed from 2003, um, was reviewed by staff and still retains adequate information value to the analysis. And the proposed revision will not affect a change in the original findings and mitigation measures and will continue to be enforced. Uh, staff recommends to uh, approve the item and I'll stand for any questions that you may have. Question from right now. I want to have the. Have any questions? Welcome to come up this time and present your uh, proposal, sir. Uh, Tori Leslie, uh, 179 Sylvia <clears throat> Court here in Imperial. Um, what do you want to know? Is the change in the housing and stuff, is it just you? You're, trying to fit more units on there or was there a reason for the change in the, the lot well, size and the we've been very successful with the Cambria product and uh, at this time we're looking at you know maybe a slowdown in housing because of interest rates and we want to keep um, our product in the affordable range and not do the the giant homes that were planned for that area there was only 36 lots planned so that would have been, you know, homes that are in the five hundred to six hundred thousand dollar range, and just felt like that's not uh, to, this time is not a good time to be doing something like that. Yeah, and we've been very successful. There's two hundred and fifty plus homes, uh, just the Cambria product that we've built so far. In, in your city. Uh, Michelle Hollinger, uh, Victoria Homes, 179 Sylvia Court. I'd just like to add uh, to what my brother said. Even though we have seen um, with the interest rates possible slowdown, we also are possibly expecting a housing crisis. So we have to look at that as well going, do we do large lots? Or do we maybe do what we do best and know that this product works and build what works and know that we can um, build affordable housing and be able to sell even if the interest rate goes up or have more units to sell if we have the housing crisis. So I just wanted to clarify that. 
she's more of the marketing side. I'm the construction guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> well, brother sister team, not too bad, huh? <laughs> okay, so you're referring to the Cambria area? So you're actually already building houses on lots of small? I'm sorry? You said you success with the Cambria yes. area? Yes, uh, it's it's our product name. Okay, it's, okay. It's the name of the project. Well, I was trying to think. Maybe I've missed something. Um, and you're building houses on lots of small? Yes. And where is that at? Mr. Chairman, if in your package, if you take, take a look at the uh, second page, we have a project location map. Uh, north of that? No, no, I understand where it is for this one. Oh, I'm asking him where he's built other ones. Correct. Like north this. of this one, uh, where it says project location, north of that, that's where he's building those homes. And then have you built on the detailed suburbs? Uh, yes. Uh, we're, you're almost at the end of... The phase 13 is 13. in the um, what uh, stucco dry and drywall stage, cabinetry is being installed, and uh, flat work is going in, driveways, that kind of thing. So that's the end of... Uh, what I have on the book so far, this would be the next Cambria product. So I'm kind of in a, you know, it's going to be a lag in, you know, product because I still have to go through a final map process after hopefully we get this approved. So I still have quite a bit of work to do before I can break ground. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of looking at a, a big gap in construction, really. Thing in this subdivision already. Oh yeah, there are There's houses on plus of those three thousand square foot lots. Yeah, they 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 come out to be thirty two something for the standard lot. Thirty two fifty. How's that working for the driveways? Because I was looking, I actually had some setback questions on that. Because we're know. just we're just asking for the same setbacks as we did in. Uh, Cambria 3 project that's directly to the north of DR4B. That project already has the same setbacks listed in Exhibit A, page 1. A front setback area house, living area house, 10 feet minimum. Yes, I believe that's exactly... We, we're just asking for exactly the same we have in BR six A, and I look at these and I'm like, and I wish I had known that these were built over. Some of these were over there because I would have liked to have gone and looked at them today. I, I well, if I'd realized there were house, houses on this side, I would have been over there looking at them because I've been around a lot of places looking at stuff today. Look at them anyway. The mop, right? She decorated them. Yeah. Well, I just see, you know, 15 foot minimum setback for the garage. So that's 15 feet to the street, to the curb, to the sidewalk. What would that the, be? The property line. Property line. And where are we measuring the property line at on that? Because I know sometimes they're saying it's set back off the street four feet. It, so I'm this, asking. This one is at least. Um, 10 feet, 5 feet from the end of the sidewalk towards your house. That's usually so, where the property so, line is. Oh, it's 5 feet plus this 15. 15. Plus that feet. So that's yes. 20 feet. That's 20 feet. So to the sidewalk. Yes. So 15 feet is to the property line, but you He's still have that. Like, yeah, that expression doesn't look like it's quite it, driving. It 10 feet face the curb. Face it's, that's yes. PL, right. and, then yeah. the, and then there's 15 feet. And there's 15 feet for that. So it's, so it's 25 from face the curb to the garage. Okay. So, because I'm looking at this going like 15 feet to the, from the garage, and I'm thinking to the street. Oh, no. no that's, I'm thinking, okay, my truck's 18 feet. Yeah, that doesn't fit. And, that's, and I think that's uh, the confusion. I mean, the, the, we well, have one property asked. at the uh, Mayfield, and that was a 10 feet. Uh, I, I believe it was 10, 10 to 12 feet setback in the garage, and then, you know, some of the cars are not able to fit there, and they're encroaching to the sidewalk. Well, that's why I wanted to ask these questions about the setbacks, because they concern me. But understanding what you're, that's why I want to know where the line starts. Yeah. So, um, and how big is the footprint? Because I noticed all these houses are two-story houses. Yes. So they have a little smaller footprint. 
yeah. on the lot than a single story house would have. Correct. Can you give me a rough, just rough? Uh, eight hundred square feet for the bottom, roughly. Six, yeah. So eighty by eighty, or rough something. If you want to make it a box, well, it's it's sort of a box, more like an L shaped. Right. And then the backyard. Setback again, I see living area 10 feet, but again, there's property line, or that property line goes to the fence. Usually a property line. And the back goes to the fence. It's not in the middle of the yard. No. So that's 10 feet. That's a minimum. These right. yards are more like 15 to 20 or 25 feet. Depends on what house is put on, which lot. By changing the changes you're requesting be for A and now, is it making the houses, the, I know we're shrinking the lot size. Are we shrinking the house sizes, the proposed house sizes, or are the lots just going to be more covered than the, in for the lots? The lots will be the same size as what the, uh, the approved project that I'm building in now. The same size, everything would be exactly the same. Same houses as well, same footprint. Little bit of a change that I believe the project has to go to two by six walls, so it'll be growing. The building we grow by an inch and a half, an inch and a half, so three feet or three inches. That's the only difference. Um, <clears throat> that's from the project I'm building now to this dip, this new one. <clears throat> Interior um, square footage will remain the same. Oh, I, I'm just trying to understand what the, the, the change. So we this, for a you had actually originally proposed larger houses, but now because the market isn't there, you're wanting to go back to what you're already doing. Yes. Okay, I see. Yes. So why not just put a smaller house on the same size lot? Then you get oh, people buying a smaller, cheaper house on a little bit nicer lot. We'll have to charge quite a bit of money for that land because the street, you know, the street has to be still be put there you're dividing the street amongst littler pieces of property or the off-site cost versus a much bigger piece of property so uh, you can't build a an affordable house with a big lot infrastructure you, the longer the lot the longer the street the longer the curb and gutter everything goes up well i mean i was on the planning commission when your other section was approved and that, and as far as affordable housing goes, there's none of this that's affordable. None of it's been affordable <laughs> for a long time. Anybody tells me, oh, it's $250,000, that's an affordable house. Said, that's a quarter of a million dollars. That's not affordable. It's, I, it's, I, that's a joke. We uh, do our best. Well, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying. <laughs> make it that way. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's, 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 so when you're, and I look at these little lots now, and, I, and I'm like appalled because I'm like, you're going to raise your, put your family in a 15 foot in your backyard and little tiny, I mean, it just turns my stomach that we're doing this on the name of cheaper housing and in the end of the day, it's not really cheaper. But, you know, you've already been building them already, so I guess that uh, cow's out of the barn on that one. So, okay, I'm done. Anybody else have any questions or anything before I close public hearing on this? Oh, uh, I did open public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Seven, seven. Oh, okay. I did. I said, I don't remember I, <laughs> opening well, public hearing. I have cheat notes here. I keep, <laughs> me in, keep me in line now. Anyway, yes, you said you hadn't. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we okay. just closed it. Um, no, go ahead. This has been my experience. I just want to share. I have friends who have moved from San Diego, and the complaint was there's no houses. Okay. And, uh, then when they did find the material, yes, the lots are smaller than sunflower, not sunflower, but over here, uh, wildflower. But there's fifteen thousand square foot lot itself. Uh, but the point is, people want to have their own little castle. Okay, 
And uh, reality is, or dumb. Money's losing value every day. Okay. And they're going, they'd rather have something than nothing. Okay. Even if it's a small yard to raise your kids in. You know, these people, they, they have economic scale of economics. They gotta they gotta be able to they gotta be able to make some money in what they're doing in today's economy. And people do want houses. And it's their judgment call whether it's affordable for them or not. It's not for me to tell them. They want to be in debt. There's kids who've gone to school and, and a quarter million dollar in debt when they graduate. And all they got is a piece of toilet paper. Can't get a job. At least here they'll have real estate and work their butt off and hopefully pay it off in 30 years. So that's my philosophy. We need noted. houses down here. Really noted. Yeah. We need houses. Okay. I think this time I'm going to close the public hearing portion uh, for commissioner's discussion. Let's, but we may ask you questions anyway, so don't run off. We're so I'm closing public hearing on um, uh, D2 at this time. Okay. Any CUP changes or recommendations or further discussion? On this or questions I found out what I wanted to know so I don't know you looked really intent intense over there I was thinking you were coming up with an, no. an amendment <laughs> <laughs> okay then do we have a motion at this time to approve or deny um, PC 2022-06, APN number 044-220-105. Approve the resolution uh, recommending to City Council approve of and unit development zone change and subdivision revisions to unit 4B. For second. Second. All those in favor? Uh, vote. Sorry, so used to doing it the old way. Motion passes three zero. There we go. We've done our due diligence. We're good to build a few more. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time and endurance. <laughs> okay, almost done. So it's time we have uh, commissioner reports. So, Alice. Commissioner Abadi, do you have anything to report to us? Well, just commenting there on Aiton Road where they improved the uh, scenery on the south side. Uh, the plants are surviving, and they came and trimmed and cleaned out the weeds. I was impressed on that. I'm looking forward when they do the next section, you know, because it, it, the plants are doing well. The trees, I was really surprised. Yeah. Scorch yes. Plant. Right. 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 Get to, get to late September when we get the west wind. Mister. Hey, Mister. No, I did not see. I'm taking a bath today. <laughs> I actually have a question. And uh, well, I guess I should reserve this until I go and check it again. I was going north on Clark. Eighth Street, which turns into P Street, crossing Aiton. There's two lanes. One goes straight, and one turns right. I was in the straight lane, and then it has those dots that I'm presuming you're supposed to follow. 
And I don't know if it was just me not paying attention or what, but to me it seemed like the dots went from being on my right side to going into the double yellow. Oh, you're absolutely right. That's totally screwed up. Okay. Yeah, so not, it's not you, just No, me. it's not an illusion. You, If you follow the so dots, you end up in follow, opposing traffic. Yeah, if you're following yeah, the no. dots, they're supposed to stay on your side, but mm -hmm. then whenever you're, you go through the intersection, they're on your right side, but then when you go into the lane, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be all of a sudden they're on your left side. Yeah. What, what, if you can take a note of the location, and then we'll get back to you and report it, and and have a uh, have a have a briefing on it. Yeah, I think yeah. what you I wouldn't talk it. about it anymore on the record just because we didn't agendize it. If you don't mind, but yeah, yeah. we'll we'll do That's it. That's just something to, to bring to thank you. Uh, staff's attention. That perfect. Okay, so it's not just me. No, no, okay. it's not just you. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna. Restrained from giving a report tonight since I haven't had anything really good to talk about. And I'm apparently, if I, I'm, I'm not sure now if I should say something because it might need to be agendized. Um. Well, I'll tell you what I am noticing more of, and that's the fact that we're starting to have. Um, I don't know the term is probably homeless people, but I kind of get that impression that we're starting to have some. Issues on Main Street with that. One lady in the shopping cart who's accosted me at least once, and I've seen her, well, accosting the error. And then another fellow who, and they seem to hover in. Just outside the door. Uh, uh, well, yes, yeah, I'm not sure that's the same one I'm talking. I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure there's more than, but she's in the lady with the shopping cart. It's a little bit concerning because she parks on the east side of the street in the morning when the sun's obviously in shade and then she moves to the side over by the laundromat in the afternoon and her behavior and actions are such that I think might require looking into maybe but I know that's we're not this is the planning commission but it seems like that kind of we talk about trying to make the city look better and we have that it doesn't help so for food for thought uh, um, the, the situation you describe is certainly we've been made aware of it, and obviously there's a lot of moving parts to uh, that uh, aspect of our society, uh, and, and uh, uh, we we have some tools to uh, to try to help folks that want want help, uh, and so we're we're trying to avail ourselves and them. Uh, of those sorts of services that are available. Uh, yeah, I just, in the cities, we've done so well for so long with not really having an issue with that. Now suddenly seeing it starting to kind of yeah, I, become an issue is kind of disheartening. I, I think over the decades, the, the um, of course, courts are always involved. And so you got, uh, the, and courts are telling us that you got to be very careful about how, you, what kind of behavior you're going to criminalize. And, and the short answer is it, you, being in that position, being poor uh, by itself isn't, isn't a crime. Uh, so, Maria, the point is we live in a freaking California, okay? All right? I wasn't going to go I'm saying it because I, my place there in Little Italy, like I said, it's not Little Italy anymore. It's a little homeless village, okay? And they got their pee and poop, and they cr break into cars, and they poop and pee in those too, all right? So, and can we say anything? No, because we got our legislature and our uh, governor who wants to be president. I'm allowed to say this because it's not on the agenda. Okay? So the point is courts or how society evolves are like that. It'd be really nice to move the lady along to say, hey, there's places where we can help you. Right, but you don't need to, to be here because we who pay the taxes are entitled to have a sidewalk we can walk on without having to tiptoe through the tulips. My my concern with the these individuals right now is we've got Il Colectivo getting ready to open, have their grand opening tomorrow, and that's where I always see them. And we have a new business getting ready to open, and I think we need to, as a city, try and help them do the best they can and if people aren't going to want to go to that business because they're going to be accosted by these people because they can be kind of aggressive and to have a new business starting out with that in their front door because that one lady's always sitting right in front of that door 
Of, of late, the city council did pass a couple of ordinances, as city manager Marita indicated, that allow us to have the tools to assist in that regard. Um, we are also in working with uh, the Imperial County Social Services uh, to highlight some of the areas of those ordinances to allow us to assist and hopefully provide the resources and relocation for those individuals. But it is an ongoing process, um, and and regardless of how we may feel or or want to assist others, there is a process in which we have to follow, but we are doing so. And I apologize for opening that can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> it's a topic that we all just but think I of think, it. Everyone I, I just wants want to, to say, live I in Imperial. If we're not addressing it or not, maybe we need to address it a little more quickly. Yeah. But at any rate. I think it's an issue of being poor. I think some people choose to live like that. And others, because of their mental situation, are not able to make a 100% choice on their part. But it's not because they're poor. They're living on the street. Because there are charities and organizations that can help. Even us county taxpayers are paying. It's not making them a criminal because they're poor. Living off the street. Yeah. But that is, I'm, as much as it's interesting it is to discuss on our time, I believe it's a little bit out of the commission's uh, scope of influence. <laughs> Leave it at that. So I am going to adjourn the Imperial Planning Commission at this time at 7.43 in the evening. Thank you all.